software engineering degree programs there they maintain the accuracy for example simple example i'll give if a car has to turn 2 degrees means it will turn 2 degrees only so it is adjusted such that it should turn only 2 degrees because there we are controlling all the variables but in our agriculture and engineering variability is the major problem we are working with variables which are highly variable for example if you take this room you take four corners of the room take the moisture content the moisture content is different. So here like this variability in all the variables. For example, you are cutting the crop, the harvested crop. Sometimes moisture will be more, some moisture will be less. So if you feed that to the thresher, again, there will be breakage of seeds. So like this, if you take the basic variabilities are many, many in agriculture engineering. Whereas other fields like IT fields, mechanical engineering, automobile, they are able to control the variables and bring the variable to the required level. But unfortunately, in our agriculture engineering, our variables are completely depending on atmospheric conditions and so many variables. So like this, doing research in agriculture engineering is little bit complicated compared to the other engineering field. You might have seen information technology nowadays. It is applied in almost all engineering fields except agriculture engineering. So till today, <clears throat> they are hesitant to touch the agriculture engineering because here they cannot have the control over the variables. So like this, we have our agriculture engineering. And coming to the farm mechanization. So farm mechanization refers to application of engineering technology for the agricultural operations to do the operations in a better way that is to reduce the labor requirement and cost of operation so i think many students you may not be knowing why this farm mechanization has come because we are doing agriculture very long time but now we say it is the era of farm mechanization era of precision farming <laughs> You might be knowing Dr. Swaminathan, he thought of increasing the agriculture yield. So he wanted to develop the agriculture in our country. So the first concept he thought was, if you give more water to the crop, then our yields will increase. With this concept, the government has started constructing so many dams, conserve water, irrigate the field. So irrigation level in our country has increased and we started giving more and more water to the crop so our yield started increasing this is from almost 1964 to 1985 so when we started giving water to the farmers the farmers started using more and more water the soils have become saline you might be knowing many places especially in command areas they are suffering this problem of salinity so salinity is mainly because of having excess irrigation. So 1985 to 95, we call it is an era of fertilizers, where all the chemical fertilizers, what you are seeing today, they started using these chemical fertilizers in the field. So the SIFCO and all those companies, they started between 85 to 95. Previous to that, <coughs> we were not using the <coughs> organic fertilizers so because of use of excess fertilizers also the soil <coughs> has lost its ability to grow the crop this is another drawback of <coughs> mechanization in fertilizer so 95 to 2005 we say it is an era of seeds where if you put good seeds in the field our plant will grow properly and our yields will increase so with this concept, so many seed companies have started, breeding programs have started. So we are able to produce a separate seed. Previous to 95, we were not having a separate seed what is sold like this in the market today. 2005 to 2020, we say it is era of farm mechanization. See, this concept of farm mechanization has come mainly because of use of less energy in agriculture. 
So if you consider in 2005, the quantum energy what we were using for agriculture is 1.05 kilowatt per hectare. If you take the national, sorry, international level, it is 2.2 kilowatt per hectare. So with this concept, our government, it started what is known as farm mechanization. See, with farm mechanization, they started giving implements. All these government schemes start only based on the concepts like this. So they started using more and more energy. So whatever the energy if the farmer is using, it should be efficiently used. With this concept, they started developing new machineries. Now we are in the era of precision farming. The precision farming is the method of farming that tailors inputs of fertilizer, pesticides, etc. to match the variation in growing conditions within a field. The practice is known as site-specific management. Next. <clears throat> so this is precision agriculture. Here, <clears throat> the precision agriculture is giving whatever the plant requires, whatever the soil requires <coughs> to grow the plant. The simple example I will give. Today we are using the fertilizers. Usually fertilizers we use 40 kg per hectare, 60, sorry, 40 bags per hectare, whatever it is. So many kgs per hectare. Is every point in the field requires the same fertilizers? Definitely no. Because if you take this soil content, so there the nitrogen availability will not be constant. It will be varying from point to point. This we are not at all considering. Blindly we are giving the fertilizers whether the plant requires or not. Like this we are wasting the fertilizers. Similarly water. Water plant requires wherever there is a dryness. So we don't look into this. We just make the water to flow into the plants and the plant grows. So the Texas water what you are using it is a waste. Like this in precision agriculture what we are doing here is you give whatever is required for the plant that's all for example spraying see spraying usually what we do all the plants we are spraying whether it got the disease whether there is an insect or not actually the plant which has the disease only that particular plant requires spraying but what we are doing here whether it requires or not continuously we are spraying for all the plants like taking the tablets whether you got the fever or not so here in precision farming what we are doing we are identifying the plant with disease only that plant should be given the medicines so like this in precision agriculture is spatial variation temporal variability to improve the economic returns following the use of inputs and reduce the environmental impact it includes vision support system, GPS, GNSS, aerial images by drones, and latest generation of hyperspectral images provided by satellites, allowing the creation of maps, spatial variability of many variables such as crop yield, terrain, topography, organic matter content, moisture level, nitrogen level, etc. Next. So like this in precision farming cycle, so what you are seeing here, this is a precision farming cycle. So you can see here, like this, the different variables we are controlling by giving the whatever the things it requires. So like this, we can reduce the cost of operation as well as we can reduce the inputs what we are giving for the plants. Next. So here in precision of farming mainly application of drone so drones can be used for many of the agricultural surveys like this drone use advantages in agriculture avoid chemical overuse check crop health livestock management soil and field analysis plantations crop monitoring so like this the drones have got very good future in the Agricultural fields. The next drones can be used with the different imaging technologies like hyperspectral, multispectral, thermal, etc. Can provide the farmers with time and 
site specific information regarding the crop health, fungal infections, growth bottlenecks, etc. Dones can identify the drier region in a field and measure can be taken to irrigate such regions with better techniques. Actually, in our university, under RKVY project, we are developing a center <coughs> of excellence for <coughs> smart agriculture. It is funded by RKVY project worth 52.5 crores. So there we are setting all these laboratories. There we are setting seven laboratories. Of course, drone laboratories, one which studies from the aerial all the conditions of the crop. So next, please. Laser leveling. This is also one concept of precision farming where the land is leveled using the laser guided levelers. So next. So you can see here, the laser guided level automatically levels the field and it makes perfect even we can keep any amount of slope, whatever is required. Suppose you want 2%, 3% slope, that can be maintained in the field. Next. You can see the field. It is leveled by laser guided leveler. Next. Soil properties analysis. See this machine, what you are seeing, this measures all the 18 properties of the soil at a depth of 15 centimeters, 30 centimeters, and 45 centimeters. Actually, now we are taking the soil samples, bringing it to the laboratory, analyzing the soil. Then we are saying what is the percentage of its nutrients. So this machine directly it measures all the soil properties at different depths. Next. So like this, after measuring the variables, the data can be <coughs> mapped using the map. So this map, what you are seeing, this is one particular field where the map indicates what is the percentage of a particular variable present in the field. Actually, this is the iron. So you can see there green patches. So sufficient iron is present. So like this, easily we can identify in the field what is the percentage of a particular variable which is present in the soil. So here we are making the grids of 40 meters by 40 meters or you can make 60 meters by 60 meters. So in that particular dark green what you are seeing, it does not require a particular <coughs> variable. Whereas light blue what you are seeing there, there it requires the nutrients. Only the nutrients is supplied to only this part of the field. So like this in future, all our tractors, machineries are GPS based where we can use the fertilizers using these maps. Next. So this is one seed drill where we are developing variable, applic variable application of fertilizers. So next. Is this machine what you are seeing? This is very simple machine. It is actually a sprayer. At the front, you can see there is a camera, green color one, what you are seeing. When it is moving in the field, it detects the plants. It detects the plants. It takes the images of each plant. Then that by means of image processing, it will send the data to the computer where the computer calculates what is the percentage of nitrogen required for the plant. Next, at the back, there will be a sprayer which is attached to this machine. So this will be spraying the nitrogen based on the plant's requirement. So it is not continuously spraying the nitrogen. It is spraying whenever it is required. So next, next. So you can see here. Next. So this indicates what is the quantity of nitrogen the plant requires. 61 kg per hectare for that particular patch. So like this, of course, here we are using the nitrogen in the form of granules, but in <clears throat> abroad other countries, they are using the nitrogen in the form of liquids. So directly they spray the liquids in the field. Next. This is the station fixed, which is outside the field. From here, the whole machine tractor and that loaders all are controlled by using the computers from remote. Next. So you can see there the moment of tractor in the field. Next. 
this is grain yield monitoring system see here this is one of the major area where farm machinery students can think of grain yield monitoring system see today we are saying the yield for the field is say so many <coughs> 4000 kgs per hectare 6000 kgs per hectare is at every point in the field is giving the same yield definitely it is not giving so what we do here you make this field into grids so already combine harvesters are there to harvest the crop so there you fix the mass flow sensor moisture sensor gps receiver so based on this you try to get the data in which part of the field what is the yield you are getting so in a particular field, if you are getting more yield, then you can study why you are getting more yield. In a particular patch, if you are getting less yield, there you can study why the yield has reduced. Is it because of nutrient deficiency or water deficiency or some other factor? So like this, <coughs> many people, you can work on grain yield monitoring system. Next. So I was working on this. Next smart and digital agriculture now wherever you go they say it is a smart agriculture or digital agriculture smart farming represents the application of modern information and communication technologies in agriculture leading to what to be called as third green revolution the third green revolution can only happen with ict management information system plant system for collecting processing storing and disseminating data in the form of needed to carry out a farmer's operations and functions. Agricultural automation and robotics. So this is also one of the important field where our agriculture engineering students can work. The process of applying robotics, automatic controls, artificial intelligence techniques, all levels of agricultural production, including farm robots and farm drones. Next. IT and AI in agriculture science. In the present digital world, the use of IT among agriculture professionals has increased in recent years. The application of computer in agriculture production was originally exploited for the conversion of statistical formula or complex model in digital form for easy, accurate calculation, which are found relatively tedious in manual calculation. In the present days, attempts are made for automation of agricultural activities, what we are doing. Next. So this is IT in agriculture. So we can have decision support system, remote sensing and GIS, crop growth models, data mining, bioinformatics, expert system. So like this, in each field, we have so many options to work for the development of agriculture crop growth modeling crop growth models are computer software programs that can simulate daily growth so what is the growth of stem leaves roots etc and yield flower pots etc of agricultural crop depending on soil characters weather conditions and crop species next data mining data mining is the process of discovering potentially useful interesting and previously unknown patterns from a large collection of data next data mining so like this we can collect the data from year 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 by year so that we can easily understand what developments can be done on this next remote sensing remote sensing refers to the process of gathering information about an object at a distance without touching the object itself. Remote sensing has application of monitoring and controlling the field activities mechanically and precisely using a central control system. So you can see here how the remote sensing can be applied for, to study the plant growth, to study the diseases, to study the water deficiency. All variables we can study only by means of remote sensing. That is using the Drones. The next. Ge GIS. Geographical information systems is a computer based information system that can acquire spatial data from a variety of sources, change the data into useful formats, store the data, retrieve and manipulate the data for analysis. GIS technology is now being increasingly 
employed for the crop resource database to arrive at appropriate strategies for suitable development of agricultural resources. Now, our university, by using the GIS data, almost our eight zones of Karnataka, we have completely covered and type of the soil. So we have issued the <coughs> soil health cards based on this GIS foods. So small scale food industries have to scope in, especially these food technology students have the scope in post harvest processing, value addition, preventation, preservation and packaging of agricultural produce. Next. Coming to bioenergy. Next. Solar energy can be converted into electrical energy by using solar PV cells through concentrating solar thermal power systems that drive conventional turbines. I think every one of us, we know the use of solar energy. Next, limitations of PV cells. But actually here, the PV cells efficiency, what we are talking, it is hardly up to 8 to 10 percent. Correct? Whatever the energy that is falling on the PV cell, only 8 to 10 percent of this is converted into electrical energy. Can we think of increasing this efficiency? So there is a lot of scope like changing the material of the cell itself or <coughs> increasing the efficiency. Next, next one. Development of very high efficiency conversion materials to advantageously leverage the associated reduction in area related balance of systems and cost. Such materials would optimally either leverage or mate with the existing. So low cost SI, that is silicon photovoltaic technology, ultra lightweight, flexible, robust and efficient material could also greatly reduce the installation cost and could allow the enhanced automation of inexpensive support system structures. Next, solar cooking. So I think every one of us we know the solar cooking. Next, R&D opportunities. So increase the efficiency of concentrator using the different materials. Sir, I have seen so many solar cooking systems, even our basic solar cooker, we say, is it 100% working properly in the field? No. I don't know why people are not aware of this. So there are some drawbacks in the system, especially if they say cooking time has increased. Even in our university, they have invested nearly six crores for solar cooking in hostels. <laughs> Very sorry to say that. None of the systems are working. Every week it will have some or other problem. So use of different insulating material to store the heat in box type solar cookers. This is one of the major area where you can work. So design of three axis tracking system for solar concentrator to collect maximum solar energy. Then design of compact solar concentrators with high thermal efficiency. Next, solar tunnel dryers. Next, the mechanism is to be developed to maintain constant temperature in solar dryer. This is one of the major problem we are facing in solar tunnel dryers because if you keep the trays, tray to tray, almost there is a difference of six to eight degrees. So that has to be brought down to one or two degrees. So a mechanism has to be developed to maintain the constant temperature in tunnel dryer design of different materials storage systems inside the tunnel dryer reduction of cost by using low cost covering material for tunnel dryer automatic air flow system inside the tunnel dryer and optimum control of variables next solar water heater this is also sir, 90 percent solar water heaters they do not work properly when on our house, there is some cloud means on that day, no hot water. Next. So reduction of cost by using low cost solar collectors. A hybrid system for heating water during rainy seasons by using other renewable energy sources. I think nobody has tried this. 
you have to de develop a hybrid system for especially solar water heaters at low cost using low cost insulating material for storage of storage tank of the solar water heater design of heat exchanger type solar water heater for heating hard water using different thermal fluids so here we can use different thermal fluids which have the ability to absorb the heat then that heat is to be transferred to the water which we are using for our thermal applications next thermochemical conversion technology next technologic barriers in gasification technology the poor mixing and poor heat transfer within the fixed bed gasifiers that is updraft downdraft and crust up gasifiers which makes it difficult to achieve even distribution of fuel and temperature across the gasifier geometry and scale up this type of gasifier is difficult so in gasifier different zones we are unable to maintain the constant temperature so if you maintain definitely the yield of gas will be more high tar production 5 to 20% in updraft gasifier remains a challenge to data and renders this type of gasifier unsuitable when a clean product producer gas is desired in fluidized bed gasifiers problem of equipment erosion due to high particle rates in product gas obtained from gasification process the stock flexibility of fluidized bed gasifier systems next r and d opportunities the presence of poor spots due to uneven heat distribution in and around the combustion zone is the main reason why these gasifiers are limited in small scale productions applications possible solutions for this are decreasing the cross sectional area of the gasifier at a certain height by altering design characteristics of throat angle and throat diameter of the gasifier by way of size reduction centralize the air inlet and its velocity using nozzles that are positioned in a way the system needs to be further investigated along with incorporation of devolatization kinetics char characteristics and gas species in relation to particle agglomeration and centering solution to problems of modern ash formation in the entertained flow gasifier is to further investigate Feed stock conversion mechanisms and gas maintenance of constant temperature in different zones of the gasifier, uniform mixing of ingredients, and preparation of pellets and briquettes. Even the pellets, what they are doing, sir, you check density will not be constant, ingredients will not be constant. So those parameters, if we optimize, definitely yield of the gas will be more. reducing the cost of pellets briquettes production designing of burners for burning of producer gas next bio conversion technologies next reduction of biogas pollutants such as h2 s volatile organic compounds silicones co and nh3 purification of biogas using molecular sieve technology to remove co2 and using co2 absorbent and trapped materials this is one of the i think still it is challenging we cannot purify the biogas 100% methane of course molecular sieve technology they are using sir even that there will be some percentage of co2 to so some people i think they have developed some bacteria which absorb co2 that also they are trying so definitely you can work on this fields development of microorganisms for different efficient conversion of biomass into biogas storing of biogas in cylinders for utilization in kitchen and automobiles design of biogas direct digester based on soil and environment conditions because there also we are required to retain the constant temperature so department of renewable energy engineering uh, extend uh, a heartfelt thanks for your effort in presenting this uh, elaborate different technologies in agricultural engineering so really it shows your experience of vast experience of 36 years you are in the uh, area and uh, you started with the different periods of um, supply of more of water 
increase of yield, then seeds, then fertilizer, now mechanization. Really, these are the newer information for us. This is the first time I am uh, listening such type of the periodic development in agriculture. Really, it's a very enlightening uh, talk to us. And if there is any questions from the audience. Actually, these concepts, I was also not knowing as a teacher. But when I started interacting with the Department of Agriculture people, ministers, so many meetings I usually attend in Bangalore. There, they were explaining this, why these concepts have come. Sir, you propose new, this one, based on this. That time I used to ask, why farm mechanization? Then they used to tell, like this, sir, we have divided. So we call it is a particular era. Now they say it is era of precision farming, 2020 to 2035. Sir, uh, it's a nice presentation, actually. So as I have heard uh, said, so it is uh, eye-opening uh, this one uh, and many of the students might be missing this one. And yeah, we have a recorded copy of this one and uh, I have only one doubt, sir. Yes. So you narrated about uh, this uh, tunnel dryer. So, so is there some modification we, that we have to do, sir, uh, which one means uh, controlling all these things? We have already, we have controller of uh, this uh, uh, fan, everything, everything is there. But uh, uniformity maintenance is a difficult problem, sir. That also, we, that we face here, sir. Yes. So is there any idea that you can suggest for that, sir? Sir, if you keep the rack of <coughs> rack like this and keep the products from uh -huh. bottom to top, definitely there will be variation. Yes, we have, we, we felt that, sir. We actually noticed that there is a difference in uh, moisture. It could not be uniformly dry the product for, uh, when we so rack it. When we what spread we it, it is, is every day you go on exchanging. Yes, yes, rates. like that only we are doing that it, sir. We are following. It's a laborious one. Is there any mechanism? Why don't we the... use some other energy source? Yes. Uh -huh. There is a difference of six degrees from this point yes, to this yes, point. Yes. Increase the heat to six degrees here by okay. using some electric heater or some other source. Something, some other source. So okay. that throughout the section it remains constant. Okay, okay. And uh, the build up uh, of temperature should be, sir, actually our heater uh, should be like this. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Okay. And at uh, the top we should have more uh, this one. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Because temperature will be less. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, Lawrence, there is one more method, sir. Actually, I thought, <laughs> but uh, I'm not in research field since okay, 15 well, years. I'm mm, completely in But we are getting Mr. ideas, sir. We will anyhow work it out, sir. Please tell your ideas, sir. That's sir, you do. collect the air coming from the dryer. Okay. Uh -huh. Pass it through a heat exchanger. Uh -huh. Then, for each tray, you go on flowing the air like this. Okay. Like and this. Uh, not uh, and, uh, in a different direction. Different direction. Direction. Move the air change the direction. Vertical direction. Okay. You make the air to flow in horizontal direction. Oh, sure, the sure. temperature will be constant. Okay, sir. Okay. That's a good, sir. That way, some mechanism you have to develop. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. And uh, we will try to do that one in future, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, you Since... Um, I profusely thank uh, Dr. S. R. Desai, and uh, actually is one of the proud alumnus of our TNAU. As I said, they did PM Tech and PhD here. So really, it's an enlightening uh, th um, talk to us, and uh, we are we are definitely benefited out of that. And we say sorry initially we have very few members, but it is in the online. And as yeah. already he said, it is recorded. So definitely it will be given to most of the students. Yes, not only uh, renewable energy engineering, you enlighten us throughout all the agricultural engineering. As I said, all the informations which we are not known to us for the last 25 years, as yes. far as I am concerned. So definitely it is a thought-provoking thought. Yes, 